Hello everybody, my name is Mazarim and welcome back to another video on the Studio Scoria channel. Uh, today what I have for you in store is the evolution of the world map. Uh, you know, for a long-winded and long-running uh, project, uh, the map of Scoria has changed quite a lot over nearly 10 years. Uh, beginning in July of 2012 and to the present day, which is uh, January 2022. So, I have for you a presentation. We're going to talk about um, how the world map started, uh, and you can just see the progress of uh, how, where it is today. So, without further ado, let us begin. So, this picture here uh, is in Luke's notebook. Luke is one of uh, the main contributors to the Scoria project, uh, and here photographed is perhaps the oldest surviving map of Scoria from 2013. Uh, there are definitely been older maps than this, uh, however, we couldn't find anything older than uh, what you're looking at right now. Um, so you might see a couple of recognizable countries if you follow the project or seen any of the previous videos where we talk about some of these countries. Uh, the folds that are broken up, uh, they're no longer broken up today. Uh, but you can also see Dan Zhao, uh, Sky Bridges, Cantus, Guwaku, uh, Hirdlin, Legion Mark, at the time it was called Legion Mark Bamberg, uh, Valscoria, which is actually Valmora now, and Valscoria is now used to refer to the region it resides in. Uh, but I look at this map and I think about, man, like just how far we've come, and it really just is so incredible to see uh, an ancient map in, in the literal sense. Uh, but perhaps just as ancient um, is <laughs> this atrocity, which I'm going to show to you next. Uh, this is the oldest digital map of Scoria. Um, basically, one day I decided I got bored <laughs> and made this in paint. Uh, you may recognize a few countries by name, not so much by shape, uh, including a couple that don't exist. Like, so Kaiserland doesn't exist anymore. Uh, Avancia is now actually a region of Valmora, and the nation of Raven no longer exists either. Uh, but this is also, uh, couldn't help but include this because this is definitely an old map. Uh, yeah, but uh, in the grand scheme of things, crucial to the evolution of the world map of Scoria. Another digital map, which is old, 2014. Uh, you will notice uh, this shape of this region is very similar to uh, the previous two. So we'll go back and I can show you like this one and this one. I believe the intention here was this region is this. Valamore still in the center as always. And two countries that no longer reside on the map, nor do in fact really any of these land masses uh, still exist. Excuse me. But here's where it gets interesting. Uh, in 2016, Luke made this map uh, in Incarnate. Uh, Incarnate is a browser-based program which lets you make really, really cool and detailed maps like this. Uh, this is where, from here on out, uh, the map really starts to shift and evolve and morph. So you can see countries that are recognizable. In fact, this is, without, with absolute certainty, this is a digital recreation of the first or the oldest surviving map, which we covered briefly. Uh, you can also notice uh, region uh, labels. This was called Illustrious when it was first created. The introduction of Valscoria as a region, instead of it being called uh, for this, excuse me, instead of it being used as a name for this uh, island country. And the region of Norisol on this side of the world as well. The world was definitely a lot smaller back then, and trust me, it only gets bigger from here. Moving on. Uh, pretty much the same map except a little bit more detailed and more countries have been added. So if I do this, if I go back, notice Cantus's shape improves and there's more vegetation across the world. Boom. Uh, this map is very, very historic because it introduces quite a few countries, uh, two of whom are, are pretty big players today. Uh, Nigeria, next country, and uh, right here, Platypostan, which will become Vedanum uh, much later. That's Brian's country. Uh, this map also introduced Denasa to the world map, uh, Memorbiland and Solgonar. Solgonar and Denasa still present, Memorbiland, which will be renamed to Salakrut in the near future. I'm trying to think, did I miss anybody? 
Oh, so as we said before, this region was once called Illustrious. Now it's called Fulderon at this time, and Illustrious is now this insular region down here. Moving on. Uh, pretty similar map as to last time. Uh, I don't remember the time frame between these two maps, but this introduced uh, labels for the seas, uh, as well as introduced a couple new countries such as Sparum, uh, Okistan, which would become Bashkan in the near future, the city-state of Maiko, which is the first city-state to be created, um, and I believe it also introduced Duralam and Malinka. Malinka, a very big player later on, uh, but this was where it was established initially. And now we get into uh, a very important event in score world history, or shall we say meta-history. Moving on from this map uh, is a very major uh, update to the Scorian canon and the world map. It uh, introduced, a, I believe, two or three new regions, uh, expanding the world map by about 50%, uh, and uh, I would say changed the face of Scoria forever here on out, because many of these countries and regions are actually still present in the world map. So here's the Guaquin Digital Model from 2017. Uh, like I said before, introduced one, two, uh, three new regions. Uh, these will be filled in in a second, you'll see, but for I just wanted to show this as this was like an early concept of where these countries would be and look like. And you can see them filled out here. This was the Wasley Nomads, so this region looks like a sort of Antarctic desert inhabited by no real nation states, but rather just people groups. Uh, this is the continent of Cassavea, which uh, I would argue is uh, perhaps one of the longest unchanging continents uh, ever in Scoria. Uh, you'll see as time goes on, uh, the shape of uh, Cassavea doesn't really change too much. Uh, the island and nation of Samundar share with Ramden. Paranor, which will become Harissia later and attached to uh, another continent in the future. Uh, Batilia, which was, I would say, the first country uh, for Mayfield to be established, but way before Mayfield existed, for that matter, and uh, Rokeshire, which is here. There's a really funny story behind the shape of Rokeshire. Um, Luke and I were both sketching out uh, shapes for more islands, uh, and quite literally and scarily enough, uh, we both conjured up something similar to what Rokeshire looks like right now. Moving on, uh, so then we have the aftermath of World War III. Uh, world War III was when this side of the world was discovered, uh, and several of these countries were actually hostile to the expeditions that came over, and a big old war was had. Uh, what did that war do? Uh, definitely changed some borders, so here's the new borders of that part of the world. Uh, you can see really the biggest change here is uh, Samundar gets carved up, the several different states, uh, and at this time in the canon, um, these states were administered or co-administered by those who went on the expeditions. So you had Balmark, Guwaku, Cantus, Valamore, Platypostan, and Iteria, uh, which is actually really funny to think about because everyone except for Balmark would be included in the Big Five when that was established as canon sometime uh, in the near future. Uh, I don't know if this map displays uh, this map does not display um, the creation of a new country in Kasavea at this time um, after World War III Dorju Bawistan which is here uh, was partitioned and a new country was formed here called the Dolia uh, but I don't believe it lasted as long which is why it's not uh, being shown here uh, this map also introduced Bayanak which is Brett's country uh, now Brett actually introduced uh, initially had a country called the Elbow Insula, which you saw, you may have seen on the first map that was shown. Uh, but over time, uh, shifted gears and made this country. I'm trying to think if there's anything else that's new here. Uh, none that I can see. So let's just go ahead and move on. Oh. There's the Elbow Insula. <laughs> Got retconned into Bayanuk and shifted poles, basically. So there you go. Um, and now here, you may have seen a glimpse of this, uh, the physical geographic version of the Guakin digital model uh, created in 2018. Uh, when Luke made this, we were just all 
astounded really um just really showcasing like just some really incredible detail uh in the world map using satellite imagery uh scaled down but retextured to still look pretty consistent and really good um we used this map for ages because of how good it was really um but not too long after it's kind of ironic to say, to say but not too long after uh i wanted to take a hand at the design of the world map so i made this this is the valmoran digital model uh in 2018. you can see not as flashy as the guaki model but uh oh here we go so this one marks the dolia uh it also I thought I swear it marked something else. I think it's it's really just my recreation of the Guaki map I made a meme out of it. So like this is now blue instead of yellow. Has the Valmora model and a picture of a Valmora man to let you know this is clearly a Valmora model. Uh, we're not messing around here. And uh, this map here is perhaps the last. Um, map of this version. This is called the Revolutionaries because um, this was a brief update to the world map, very rough uh, update mind you, that would introduce new countries uh, to the world. So up here, this was Okistan as we discussed, but it was slowly becoming Bashkan. These islands off the coast of Danza would form what is now Fudao. And this part right here, this yellow part of the Wasling Nomads was forming a, a kingdom called Shudar. Uh, this was the last map of this version before the 2018 uh, World Shuffling, which, my goodness, a very, very big and important event. So the World Shuffling uh, introduced several new regions and countries to Scoria, effectively doubling, or if not, maybe even tripling, the number of countries that were present in the canon. Uh, this map demonstrates how big the world map was going to become. Because they, as you can see here, this is the original size of the Guakin and Valmoran digital models. Uh, and this, these dimensions were what will become the new world map in 2018. This introduced um, some placement for the regions as well as the introduction of the Illustrian region. Uh, a little fun fact about Illustrious, um, the Scorian world map uh, almost literally became... Uh, these regions plus Illustrious. It was really only, it was nearly going to become, it was, so let me rephrase that. Illustrious, the shape of it was almost going to be expanded or like enlarged, and it was going to fit all of Valscoria and parts of Talmer and uh, Casabea. So it, it very nearly became um, what, like a major region. Uh, but uh, it became a region that would house more Asian-inspired countries. Uh, this part, uh, don't know where that came from, to be honest. I have no <laughs> actual memory of it, uh, but it's not in the final version. Uh, this, I believe, that's actually not Bayonok, because Bayonok's right here. Uh, this was probably cut out, I believe, at some point. And this, I think, was resized and flipped, and it would become Arcosia. And right here as well, you can kind of see, uh, is Gorza. So there you go. Uh, in our next phase of the World Shuffling uh, maps, uh, we have Laboka. This is actually what Laboka uh, originally was going to look like. A uh, big old blob, uh, about half the size of the world. Uh, pretty incredible because we wanted a big continent to begin with. So uh, initially it made sense. It's like, oh, we should just keep it this size. But uh, eventually, as you see, it got downsized and cut up a bit. And here we can see it being downsized, but not quite recognizable yet. Uh, you also notice the other regions were colored in uh, to mark uh, where they would be and where they would form. Uh, this also introduced Mayfiel, which is this yellow blob up here. Uh, Mayfiel, as we discussed in the previous world building uh, uh, stream, uh, is like a region based off the Arctic Circle. I believe this was also resized down and moved further north. Uh, at this point, uh, Batilli was still part of Casabea, but uh, not too long from now, it would be moved up here. And next, we have a rough draft of the World Shuffling map, which uh, indicates the first borders 
Uh, so far, these are more recognizable borders as we've seen in the previous maps. Uh, this map also introduced independent Archandros and a couple new island nations in Valscoria we can see right here. Here's Arcosia flipped and resized. Uh, and other than that, these are all recognizable from the 2017 maps. And here we have uh, another rough draft of borders, finally carving up borders on Mayfiel and Elystrius and Baboka. Uh, if I look at this carefully, um, let's see. So Rhyalysis, I think, was initially established uh, in Casavea on this island. However, it was eventually moved to its own set of islands some years later. Uh, what else? What else? Uh, Sal Morris doesn't get renamed until later, which we'll, we'll talk about. Uh, Sal Garibaldi, which exists in this sphere, uh, would actually get renamed to, uh, I believe, Sapelia a couple of years after this map was made. The nation of Nargos no longer exists, or I believe it was a. Yeah, this is funny to think about. See, like, these countries are all flipped, like, name wise. Pilwana is, I believe, where Rakarcha is. Rakarcha is where Nargos is. This is actually where Nargos was, but was ultimately replaced by uh, Kalantris, which was uh, Brendan's country. Um, anything else that I can think of? Oh, here we go. This is very important to talk about. Uh, this was Platypusdam, but slowly morphing into Venom. Uh, but for a short time, it had the name Yarinium, which is pretty funny to think about. Um, and this right here was Diablo Insula, but renamed to Petan Ka'a. I, don't, I honestly don't want to say the rest of that because it just sounds bad. Uh, ultimately, this name was short-lived and renamed at some point in the future. But there you go. That's your rough borders for 2018, World Shuffling. And then we get into actual borders. So this is what the world map looked like. Uh, in 2018, after everything was said and done, color is more standardized rather than individual. It just made the map look better. Uh, and you can see, for a funny, for some odd reason, uh, this predates uh, when these nations got moved around. So I guess for a short time, this was the case for these countries. Uh, but I, I, I can't help but point it out because um, it's definitely not like that anymore. <laughs> so uh, anything else? Uh, here we go, finally. Instead of Inorinium, it uh, becomes Venom. Uh, you still have, oh, this is a new country, Lauferland. Little tiny enclave in the Valds and Brokel. The nation of Hyvorochim, which was a city-state uh, in Hrena. Sort of like a Mount Athos, if you will. Uh, here we have Batilia finally moved up to Mayfjall, as well as Bayanacht, uh, in a new shape, also moved to Mayfjall. And, uh, ooh. I didn't talk about this in the previous editions, but we reintroduced Meadland as a part of Laboka. Uh, Meadland was one of the oldest countries in the canon, uh, first mentioned in the digital map from 2013, I believe. Uh, who else can I talk about? Oh, Aurora. I don't know if this was marked in the previous map, but Aurora was also created under Nycteria uh, next to Lalinka. Morvec was originally here. Wow, this is an ancient map. Uh, Memorabilia being renamed to Salacrude. Uh, Catarast, uh, Catarast replaced Sparum uh, shortly after Sparum was created. Delscoria got moved up here. An independent Arkandras. And yeah, this was the world for quite some time. Until it looked like this. Uh, this was a reshaping, redimensions of the world map. Uh, trying to make the equator... Uh, trying to recenter the equator, so that's why you can see a lot of open ocean uh, in the south. Uh, I don't know that this introduced any new countries or changes to countries so much as... Oh my god, what am I saying? Let me show you. These guys? Boom. This is the new Talmeri map. I should have called it that, but I totally glanced over. Uh, but basically this made... Uh, Fulleron and Norisol, two previously separate regions for the longest time, uh, into one unified region, uh, simply because it only made sense because uh, their cultures are very similar. <laughs> At least and I watching from the line of Chick fil A. Sweet memories. Yeah. Thank you, fellas. I appreciate it. Um, what else can I talk about? Okay, so this introduced Chevinach, which is a nation based off Poland, to Talmer. 
Um, here we have Horatia finally instead of Paranor. Uh, and here we finally see these countries switching places. So Perwana, Ricarcha, and finally uh, Calantris is here. And this nation finally gets renamed to Shesoklar. Anything else I can see? Uh, other than these new ocean labels, no, nothing, nothing really. So the Harrisian Sea, Glomari Sea, Bosmar Ocean on both sides, and of course the Northern and Southern Seas. Here we have another interesting map. Uh, this is the new map that introduced Visuna. Visuna was originally just, excuse me, these guys. Uh, but now it was this, and these guys. Um, and so you can see the first nation that was marked in Visuna was Datesland. Datesland was a country created by my good friend Alois. Uh, but for the longest time, uh, I want to say this map was created in June of 2019. And it wasn't until December which we finally added countries because uh, we spent that time working on other things and trying to come up with countries to add to that region. Um, Realis is still in Town Mayor. Uh, let's see if I can find anything else. Uh, I don't think this changes anything else from the previous maps uh, other than just Vistuna. So that's Vistuna for you. And now we finally get to a completely filled out uh, political map of Vistuna. So you can see more countries in Vistuna. Oh, this also breaks up Samandar, which is interesting. Uh, and I believe that's all for that map as well. But a very big and important update uh, addition to the scoring canon, if you will. This is a better fit, <laughs> made shortly after the political map of Vistuna. Uh, all it really does is instead of this island cutting off uh, on both sides, which you can see here, just fits it better. That's all. It looks better. It looks nicer. And then we have, uh, I believe this was actually the beginning of 2020. I don't know why it says 2019, but uh, a new Valscoria and Alagosa. Alagosa was added uh, as probably the I want to say the first addition to Casavea since uh, 2018. Uh, and then the new Valscorian countries of Agalon, uh, Tavibos is actually Del Scoria but scaled up, uh, Guaku gets a new shape, Teleria right here, Savarek right here, Skivia, and Rialea, and Nilius. These were all, and Maurum, excuse me, these were all new additions to Valscoria, which previously was basically just Cantus, Valamore, Guaku. And then we have the addition of Sea Shantium and Bessenia, as well as some rescaling of previous continents. So if I look here, everything's a little more spread out, maybe even a bit bigger. If I go here, uh, things get moved around uh, to make way for things in the future. And I think here is really where you can see the map really coming together. I think it starts to look more recognizable from here on out, uh, with a couple of more dramatic changes coming forward, though, however. But this introduced C. Shantium, Lawrence Country, uh, just kind of a nation inspired off of the West Indies and Sirens, Shibuya, shout out. And then we have Bessinia, which was uh, not made by anybody in particular, but more inspired off of uh, a good friend of mine's idea for like, an anarchist country. So Bessinia is our first and only uh, anarchist country. Oh, and this also introduced capitals to the map as, as well. So you can see uh, tiny text and dots that uh, showcase capitals of each country. Pretty exciting, pretty fun stuff. This uh, was a brief time which we had a projection called uh, Natural Earth, which we got off a website, and it kind of made the map into like a globe, and uh, was really fun to work with. Uh, and imagine Scoria in this light. You can see, I think this introduced Markenholm, which is a territory of Hirdland. Uh, this is Realis' new shape right here. And if we go here, there's the political version of that map, and if we click again, there's the labels. Oh, that's right. This introduced Nedeong, which was uh, a separatist country from Joa. And if we go here, uh, we depart from the National Earth Projection and into uh, Bosmaria. Bosmaria was a new region. Uh, I think it was the first new region added since um, 2018. 
and it was sort of based off the Caribbean, and at that time uh, occupied this part of the world, going into Talmere. So basically, we just made Sea Shanty and a bunch of buddies, as well as Bassinia, filled up the area between them. Uh, I'm trying to think if this added any more countries uh, in the meantime, because often is the case where um, a country gets added and that spawns uh, the creation of several new areas. Uh, but as far as I can tell, oh, Panessia Balls, shout out, uh, my brother Sam's country, uh, which will get the rename to Panessia at some point. Uh, obviously, we discussed in the previous map, Rialysis was made, but who occupies where Rialysis was? That's right, by you. Um, where else? I believe at some point Morris Land was created, uh, and that's where that is. But uh, yeah, Bosmario 2020. Uh, made shortly thereafter, we consolidated Valscoria into one uniform region. It just kind of looked better instead of like the sprawling mess you could see here. Uh, it looked better and kind of formed better as like these closely uh, tight knit group of islands. Um, I, I think it makes for a better storytelling too. You can kind of uh, get the impression that at some point this was once a big landmass. Uh, this in was earlier last year, we introduced the region of Matafua. We also changed a lot of Illustrious, and we moved Bosmaria and consolidated it to right here. Matafua is right here, and it's essentially like a region of Pacific Islands. It's, in fact, the newest region. Still is. Uh, and to tell you the truth, I don't foresee us adding any new regions to the future. Uh, unless at that point you want to have like a Pangea, we could do that at some point, I guess. Um, but this also reshaped, as we said, parts of Illustrious, specifically the southern portion, so Narakami, Duralam, Akasa, Pangam, and Selamong. Uh, I think these shapes just look a lot better. Uh, and at some point, Izvokas was added in between Riolea and Cantus, uh, and a tiny nation here called Magashol was made. Uh, Malafua finally moved uh, in between Laboka and Illustrious, uh, as per the uh, suggestion of Sebastian. His country's right here, and in fact has been there for quite a while. I'm sorry for not mentioning that sooner. Um, but there you go. You know, we moved Matafu between Laboka and uh, Illustrious, uh, and I think in the long run it just looked a lot better. A lot of these were all obviously design choices, not so much lore choices. And with the exception of, uh, you'll notice Illustrious and Laboka switch places, uh, and that's simply because... Um, I think the cultures in Northern Laboka resonate more with Southern Valscoria, so that's why we made that change. So after we moved Matafua, we went back to a natural earth project projection, just kind of rounding up the corners of the world, just makes the whole place look a lot nicer. This also introduced Kodwaria, uh, unlabeled, but basically our, our uh, Antarctica. Uh, here's a recolor. Uh, a lot easier on the eyes, I think a lot better to look at. Uh, we got capitals, we got nation labels. Uh, I don't know if there are any new countries added so much as um, the regions were heavily reshaped and uh, just look a lot better. Look more rugged, look a li little more natural, I think. Uh, but moving our way into uh, another relabeling. Uh, this map is, I think, identical to the previous. Uh, with the exception of, obviously, these ocean labels you can see, um, as well as uh, the nation labels are a little more spaced out. Uh, and I think um, if you were to zoom in, a lot easier to read. Uh, and I believe, let me just double check my notes. Okay, we have one more map for this one. Uh, this map is a really minor update. Um, renames this country to Yutsuyawa, which was formerly Shei Soklar, and renamed Samoras to Taurusia. Now the reason I introduced this map, or included this, uh, was because um, I believe from here on out, uh, the map is going to be totally, totally different. And I don't mean in the same sense as like the world shuffling changed those maps, but uh, more along the lines of uh, sty stylization. So without further ado, um, this is the current map, which was um, started in uh, last month, but had updates uh, into this month. So, boom. 
this is the current map of Scoria, <laughs> which introduces the height map. Um, turns out the height map isn't super complicated to create, uh, so did that. Uh, made the countries look a lot more rugged, uh, give it some life. Uh, this also added uh, Barobia to Laboka as sort of the link between Matafua and Laboka. Uh, this also added Maripol, which was uh, based off a country that briefly joined Scoria on nation states. Uh, and it also introduces a couple more city states which are scattered throughout the world. Um, but I really can't tell you how proud I am of this map. And um, looking at this and seeing how far we've come uh, in the grand scheme of things. But uh, I believe that is all I have for you on world maps. Uh, let us know if there was a particular version you liked. Uh, unless it was this one, which... There you go. Um, if you'd like to see these done live uh, and scuffed, you can watch me at twitch.tv forward slash Uh But thank you guys so much for watching. And until the next one.